This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 22nd day of April in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. Vendors operating in the Stabrook Market Bazaar who were asked to close their businesses temporarily and clear the main walkway following last week's wharf collapse are now up in arms over a decision by the Georgetown City Council to have the middle section of the bazaar remain cleared until further notice. A number of the vendors told news source today that while they complied with the orders of the municipality to close their businesses temporarily to facilitate the removal of debris from the wharf collapse site, the situation has become unbearable, with many of them losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in perishables. One vendor, Maria Bailey, said from the inception there was poor communication on the part of the city council. And we were expecting that when the council went to the back deal, and they would have assessed the situation. They would have seen what happened, and at least they would have come and have a word with the stall. They never did. Since last week, Thursday, we were unable to sell. Today, we had to go over to the council, and that's how we were able to have this gate open so that we could come in, open up, and sell. You understand? I am saying that it was a lack of communication between the council and the stall holder. They didn't care anything about us. They just feel that they just come and do as they like and that's it. Bailey also said while the stall holders within the bazaar are now being permitted to sell, those who've been in the middle section of the bazaar have not been given clearance as yet. The council has given persons permission to sell in the middle of the road. Now that this situation arises, the problem that we're having is that these people had to move the thing from off of the road. Some are not stall holders, they have nowhere to put the thing. So I don't know how the council is going to deal with this situation. Another stall holder, Terence Clement, explained that while he owns a stall in the bazaar, he usually sells in the middle section to beef up his sales, given the location of his stall. My stall is at the back of the market. You want to see it? You want to see it? Because you're going to you glad people put news. Put a seat at the back of the market. Now, a lot of stall holders selling at this road, you saw? Because why? The stall at the back. Now, we just come to occupy in the middle because we have a stall rent to pay. You yeah, understand? Now the front stalls. Got stalls pony in, in this one side, that one side there. Now they right, le right and left side. Now they are doing the business. Now people can't come at the back. Because for me, we come to the market here, so for shop. I won't go to the back there by you. And see everything in front here. You yeah, understand me? So what we do, we come out here and get a daily bread. He said while vendors willingly clear the area to remove the debris from the collapsed wharf, it is unfair for the council to tell them that they would not be able to sell until further notice. It's um, Wednesday gone. We get a sudden thing. Well, we understand so we move up and thing. But you're telling me nothing. We start all the time, we pay revenue every afternoon plus pay a stand rent. We pay more money than even the fund stand with them. We pay more money than them. We pay more than them. We pay a revenue plus a stand rent. Yeah, so it's not stall out there. Because it, this business is a competitive business. And Anne Castello, who has been vending in the area since she was a child, said she had no other choice but to sell in the middle of the bazaar to earn a dollar. I am down inside of a crack, whereas I can do no business. I gotta come out in the middle to, to receive a daily bread. Last Wednesday, I wasn't here, but I received a phone call that, um, that the wall for the back, it is broken down. And the people in the mill here, we, uh, we, uh, we all have, um, have um, to move off. We, we, we um, cooperate. Good? Now all of the stuff them finish moving from, uh, from, uh, from, from, from uh, the back. And, and, and uh, the council them give, um, give uh, the stall holders them, eh? we, um, the stall holders them to the front. To, um, and to come and, and, and open up and sell. We, the people in the middle, we don't know how, how are we stand even presently now. Unlike the other, Sharon Dundas told news source that she has no stall in the bazaar, but was permitted to sell in the middle section of the roadway. However, since the collapse of the wharf, she has been unable to sell. After the wharf blew down, they told us that we have to move. Well, you, to you say to take me to the half, I don't have a stand. To put it in the corner, all those are my own. Put in the car now and she even say from Friday morning, she didn't say from, from, from Wednesday to now. It's a Friday morning, you could say from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And afternoon time, the van operator come in and go out. From since they come off, you never get no access to come back. 
this is it. All the ghosts today in Kong and they don't have a stand. Why y'all went Kong so what they tell y'all? They said that Mr. Alolo could operate and we have to wait until further notice. Mr. Alolo is for 30 something here. And in the lane, nobody don't go in and shop. We just get flooded in the lane there. But all this road selling, we cannot survive. And since Thursday, we know nobody didn't come and tell me nothing. And we got perishable load. Over at the Kitty Market, where the Georgetown City Councilors met for a statutory meeting today, the issue was raised by the mayor, Alfred Mentor. Mentor told the council that, much to his surprise, he received reports this morning that vendors were not being permitted to sell in the bazaar when he had instructed that they be allowed to sell there from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily until the wharf is cleared. However, the town clerk, Candace Nelson, explained that it cannot be business as usual in the bazaar until the wharf is completely dismantled and cleared following last week's collapse. Works were primarily going to be done at night. So that arrangement that we had would have been quite mm -hmm. easy to mm -hmm. execute. However, works are being done through the day into the night. So because we have to have access to that area and because the rubbles were still in the bazaar, we could not open as to normal. I met with a few of the vendors while I was there and I explained that to them. I said, I cannot open for you to sell and we have danger lying right here. Because if anything happens to you, well then the council will be blamed. But as soon as we can clear that area, I will allow the stall holders to come in and to sell. It was explained that once the debris has been removed completely, stall holders will be allowed to sell during their usual hours. However, the road must remain clear. City engineer Calvin Venture told the council that the majority of the vendors occupying the middle of the bazaar have their stalls. The issue with regards to vending in the middle of the bazaar has been referred to the markets committee of the city council for a report on the matter. However, it was agreed by the council that the city's administration would be given approximately one week to clear the area and complete the removal of debris before vending by store holders could be allowed to return to normalcy. More news coming up in just a moment. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Guyana's landscape is set to immensely transform with some $221.4 billion earmarked to fast-track the country's infrastructural development. To improve accessibility, $204.1 billion was budgeted for roads and bridges. Some $6.9 billion will be going towards strengthening the country's river and sea defense, $8.1 billion and $2.3 billion for improved river and air transport respectively. These projects are supported by the country's first trillion dollar budget, which was supported by oil revenues. For the official Linden Town Week Big People Party. This year, Big Man Door Skylark. 
Join Go Mostly Entertainment on Thursday the 2nd of May at the Mackenzie Bandstand for five big bands, Stitchy, Super Ray, Murphy, the Castro Brothers, and for the first time in Linden, the one-woman band, Queen Makiba. Oh, when I see what I was getting, boy, I start to shiver Cause I know I'm gonna hear baby that Get me young boy Plus DJ Granny Ivy will be live Party like never before It's a one-man band and one-woman band fest For Linden Town Week Thursday the 2nd of May At the McKenzie Bandstand Big Man Tour Skylark Compliments of GTT Sheriff Security 592 T's Banks Beer Guinness And XM Rum Strict responsibly For the official Linden Town Week Big People Party Big man, don't skylark. Love knows no boundaries of time. It transcends the ages, forever etching its mark on our hearts. Super Stylistics, in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport and the Government of Guyana, present Timeless Love, the 31st production of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024 at the National Cultural Center. A celebration of a unique family bond and flawless flamboyant fashion. Glitz, glamour and grand giveaways for lucky patrons too at the 2024 Mother and Daughter Pageant. National Cultural Center, May 11 from 20 hours, preluded by red carpet. Tickets six, five, five, and $5,000. It's Timeless Love. The General Secretary of the Ghana Trades Union Congress, Lincoln Lewis, today said a ruling by Justice Sandal Kassoon last Friday in the case brought by the GTU against the government addressed key constitutional issues, including the right to strike. While ruling on the move by the government to cut the salaries of teachers and to halt the deduction of union dues over their decision to engage in strike action, Justice Kassoon established that Guyanese have a right to strike and not just a freedom to strike. During a virtual press conference today, Lincoln Lewis of the GTUC said the judge's ruling has offered renewed hope that the Constitution can work and is therefore there to protect and advance the rights of citizens and not to embolden governments to transgress them. The decisions included that there exists the right to strike in the circumstances where as employer, where an employer has taken the decision not to negotiate with trade unions. The transgression, the, trans, the termination of the checkoff is illegal and must continue. The declaration, or the deduction in fact, from the salaries of the teachers is illegal due to the fact that the employer refused to negotiate. The dereliction in the performance of the duties of the chief labor officer in seeking, in not seeking, to address the issue as requested by the union. Mr. Lewis said the landmark ruling has prevented the government from cutting off the lifeblood of the GTU, noting that if the government was successful, it would have turned on any union challenging its violations and transgressions. He also said it is clear from the government's posture in and out of the courtroom that it was never prepared to play by the rules, and it is therefore important for the unions to unite against any violation of workers' rights. He said the trade union community must recognize that the GTU has led the way on this landmark victory, which is important not only to Guyana, but the wider Caribbean and Caricom nations, as he saluted the leadership of the GTU, Mark Light, and the General Secretary, Coretta MacDonald. The labor union has proven with its collective membership from all races and communities that Guyanese can come together on issues, on issues, fight and win their battles and struggles against common threat to their collective well-being. It is a lesson that must be enshrined our teachers from all races, ethnic, ethnic and political persuasion, rejected race, race, ethnicity, and political beating to show the world and other guys we can achieve 
as a united labor movement. The GTUC was an added party in the case brought against the government by the teachers' union. In his ruling, the judge found that the government, through its actions, sought to sideline and undermine the union and did not engage the union in collective bargaining despite the best efforts of the GTU. He also ruled that a strike by the teachers was just and fair and the salaries of teachers should not be withheld. It was also found that the decision to stop the deduction of union dues from the salaries of teachers on behalf of the union was discriminatory, unilateral and unconstitutional. The government has rejected the ruling and has signaled its intention to appeal. The Ghana Teachers Union has said it will be paying keen attention to the next actions by the government now that the court has declared that a strike earlier this year by teachers was legal and justified and that a chief labor officer did not do his duty when the union sought conciliation and arbitration. GTU President Dr. Mark Light in an address to teachers on Sunday hailed the ruling by the court and said based on the court's ruling it is clear that the Ministry of Labor and the Chief Labor Officer neglected their duty as a mediator in the breakdown of talks between the GTU and the Education Ministry. Light indicated that the union intends to write to the Labor Ministry and the Education Ministry on the decision of the court and demanding action be taken with regard to the collapsed 2019 to 2023 negotiations. Justice Senel Kisun in his ruling on Friday declared that a strike by teachers was legal and that they were justified in their action as the government refused to engage the union in collective bargaining. The High Court judge also ruled the government's actions during the strike to discontinue deducting union dues from the salaries of teachers was unlawful. He also blocked the government from slashing the salaries of teachers over their strike action. Purple Arts Productions presents a treat for my mother's seven on Mother's Day Sunday, May 12. Purple Marshall and Strings, Barbara Lee, Leo Walter, Ian Nelson, and others. Golden Jewelry for the Best Dressed Mother in Purple, 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets $3,2500. Compliments NDMS Furniture Store, Nuno K Creations. Essential Care Pharmacy, Sunflower Jewelry, a Purple Eyes Theatre Production. Hi, my name is Keisha Davis, first of four siblings, I'm a mom of three and I'm an auditor. My brother Tariq is a transgender man, which means he was born female, but now lives as a man. He's always known himself to be. He's great at math and horrible. And he actually helps my 12-year-old um, my daughter. Uh, with her math. As soon as he gets home at night, he'll say, Jazz, let's go. What what would you like me to help you with? She actually got a price in school for full score at math and English. Tariq is my rock. Like, honestly, my countdown. No matter what it, no matter what it is, no matter how horrible it might look through others' eyes, he doesn't touch. And he is there to support me, to support my kids. I don't know why we'll do that. Linden, it's time for the official Linden Town Week Big People Party. This year, Big Man to a Skylark. Join Go Mostly Entertainment on Thursday the 2nd of May at the Mackenzie Bandstand for five big bands. Stitchy, Super Ray, Murphy, the Castro Brothers, and for the first time in Linden, the one-woman band, Queen Makiba. Oh, when I see what I was getting, boy, I start to shiver because I know I'm going to hear baby that get me young boy. Plus DJ Granny I TV will be live. Party like never before. It's a one-man band and one-woman band fest for Linden Town Week, Thursday the 2nd of May at the McKenzie Bandstand. Big Man Tour Skylark. Compliments of GTT, Sheriff Security, 592Ts, Banks Bear, Guinness, and XM Rums. Drink responsibly for the official Linden Town Week Big People Party. Big Man Tour Skylark. Mobile One is more than oil, it's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Solgan is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants.
Let's tell you now that the security forces in Guyana are probing the discovery of a semi-submersible vessel in the Northwest District in Region 1. That discovery took place on Saturday. The vessel was found in the Payana Creek in Port Kaituma on Saturday afternoon by the police. There was no one found on board the vessel or nearby, but investigators said on the inside of the vessel that they discovered 15 sandbags and 6 cases of water. The vessel was found hidden on the truly leaves and the makeshift camp was discovered nearby. Investigations are continuing tonight. Back in March, a U.S. patrol off the coast of Guyana found a similar vessel packed with cocaine. The four crew members aboard that vessel were arrested and transferred to the U.S. to face drug trafficking charges. A 22-year-old laborer who attempted to fight off two bandits as they tried to steal his motorcycle was shot dead last night in the Sapphire area. Police have identified a dead youth as Alwyn Griffith of Afield South Sapphire. According to a police statement, at around 9.30 on Sunday night, Griffith was sitting on his motorcycle just in front of his home when two men approached him with one of them pointing a handgun in his direction. The two men demanded the man's motorcycle and after he refused to hand over his motorcycle, a scuffle broke out between him and the two men. One of the armed men fired a shot which struck the 22-year-old to his chest. The police said the young man collapsed on the roadway and as his attackers tried to ride off with his motorcycle, an alarm was raised by persons in the neighborhood who gave chase behind the two attackers, forcing them to leave the motorcycle behind in their escape bid. One of the men was captured by the residents and has been identified as a 19-year-old from Old Boys Town. The police said the other suspect managed to escape. 22-year-old Alvin Griffith was taken to the Georgetown Hospital where doctors pronounced him dead. The suspect, who was caught by persons in the area, was badly beaten, and he too was taken to the Georgetown Hospital, where he was admitted and is on the police guard. Family members and friends of the murdered young man have been left in disbelief. Investigations are ongoing as the search continues for the second suspect. Purple Arts Productions presents a treat for my mother's seven on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 12. Sean Buller, Bernie House, Charming Black, Ronald Green, and others. Golden jewelry for the best dressed mother in purple. 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets $3,2500. Compliments of survival shopping trumpets. Disinco training. Secure innovations at concept in. A Purple Arts Theatre production. Directed by Simone Dowdy. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. Our commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming and we're all part of it. Guyoil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. 
holiday spending, put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over five million dollars, including over one million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Buster Turbo. Fruta, cool kids are viva. Look for all the eight digit code starting with 786. Then visit Facebook or IG at Busta Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. With your regional and international news tonight, I am Swetlana Marshall in the region. Venezuela's state-run oil company PDVSA plans to increase digital currency usage in its crude and fuel exports as the U.S. reimposes oil sanctions on the country. Three people familiar with the plan said. The U.S. Treasury Department last week gave PDVSA's customers and providers until May 31 to wind down transactions under a general license. It did not renew due to a lack of electoral reforms. Reuters in a report said the move will make it more difficult for the country to increase oil outputs and exports, as companies will have to wait for individual U.S. authorizations to do business with Venezuela. PDVSA, since last year, had been slowly moving oil sales to USDT, a digital currency whose value is pegged to US dollar and designed to maintain a stable value. The return of oil sanctions is speeding up the shift, a move to reduce the risk of sale proceeds getting frozen in foreign bank accounts due to the measures, the people said. The US dollar is the preferred currency for transactions in the global oil market. Even though they are emerging in some countries, payments in cryptocurrency are not frequent. Ecuadorians have voted in favor of allowing the military to patrol their streets as part of a referendum on boosting security in the country. The poll was called after Ecuador went from being relatively peaceful to having the highest recorded murder rate in Latin America. Voters also backed longer prison terms and extraditing violent criminals. But human rights groups have raised concerns that the measures could lead to abuses. President Daniel Noboa called the referendum following a spate of high-profile murders, including the assassination of a presidential candidate last year and several mayors in recent months. In 2023, police recorded about 8,000 violent deaths, and in January, the country was rocked by a wave of violence, which saw top gang leader escape from jail, prison riots, and staff at a TV station being held hostage by armed gang members while they were live on air. And finally tonight, international news. Prosecutors painted Donald Trump as directing a pre-election cover-up while his defense countered that he was merely trying to win a race for the presidency, calling it democracy. On Monday, Manhattan prosecutors and Mr. Trump's legal team laid out different visions of the hush money case. Prosecutors claim that he was at the center of an alleged scheme involving false business records, payouts and influencing the 2016 election. But Mr. Trump's lawyer kept it simple. The former president, his attorney said, is cloaked in innocence. The first witness, a former publisher, David Pecker, also took the stand, but that testimony was ultimately brief and only covered certain aspects of Mr. Pecker's editorial responsibilities at the American Media Inc. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.